Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me. And what we're going to do in today's time is we're going to talk chatterbait trailers. Maybe some a little different. We're going to talk some you've seen before, but I'm going to show you five chatterbait trailers that really get the job done. Stick with me. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so let's get into this. I want to show you one right out of the gate that's a little bit different than probably your average chatterbait trailer. And what that is, it's a great jig trailer, one of my favorites, but it is a Zoom swimming chunk. And this bait right here, like I say, is traditionally a um, jig trailer and a small jig trailer at that. But what I have found is it makes a fantastic chatterbait trailer. And what I'll do, for example, like on this chatterbait, uh, this is a jackhammer, but you can be using a traditional, you know, chatterbait, um, thunder cricket, it doesn't matter. But the way this is rigged up, you can see it is a, it's a long bait and it has that long profile. So when I feel like they're feeding on shad, they're maybe a little bit bigger or bluegill, they're a little bit bigger. I'll go to this. It seems to work really well during the spawn and even start to lead into the, uh, the post spawn as well. Um, has a lot of movement to it, but what I'll always do is, I'll take a little section of Cinco or stick worm or plastic worm, whatever it is that you have, cut it down just like you do on a jig. Now I use it as a little bit of a buffer so this trailer does not ride up on this hook and basically get it foul hooked when you cast. Um, but this bait right here, this actually this particular color with this trailer was responsible for my, my biggest fish of last year. It was a 7.4. Um, so it is a different trailer that you guys might want to try out and check out that's not traditionally considered a chatterbait trailer. All right, guys, so next we'll go through these. And these are more of your traditional paddle tail style, your boot tail style trailers. A uh, little bit different in each, and I'll explain each of them to you and, and why I use each one. So first off, this is a uh, Excite Bait Shad Nasty. And it is a, I found it to be just a fantastic trailer. Uh, chatterbait trailer uh, to use during the pre-spawn, during the spawn, and even in through uh, into the warm weather. But it, it seems to excel like this bait does as well, this trail I should say, um, in cold water. And this is a Reaction Innovations Skinny Dipper. And what I like to do when I use either one of these is I'll take these and I will, like on this chatterbait here, I will trim down the head just a little bit. You know, I'll go back four, five, six ribs and trim it down to where it fits the bait and gives it a little bit sleeker profile. But this particular bait actually, and this trailer, uh, along with another one here I'll show you in a minute, were responsible for us doing pretty well on a couple tournaments last year. Uh, but I really feel like that the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper and the Shad Nasty uh, from Excite Baits excel um, in colder water is when I like to use um, these paddle tail, these boot tail type trailers. And also, you know, I don't always match the hatch kind of like I did with this. Sometimes I might take, like this is this blue and chartreuse, and I'll mix it up with something like this fire crawl. And you think, man, that doesn't match at all. But that's kind of the idea. It looks loud. It looks obnoxious. And when you're looking for that reaction strike, which is primarily what you're doing with the chatter bait, like a spinner bait um, and things like that, that kind of aggressive vibration, that loud sound signature mixed with just that loud kind of obnoxious color, I think a lot of times combines to really get that reaction strike, especially out of lethargic fish. And while we're talking about this Excite Bait Shad Nasty, once again, this is one that I'll trim down. And as you can see, like on this, this one right here, I mean, compared to the other bait, how much I've trimmed it down. So trimmed a good, you know, inch off of it. Um, gone back on it about three or four ribs back here and trimmed it off so it fits nice and flush against the back of the head of that chatterbait. Um, you know, there may be times you want to put the whole length of this on there and, you know, you could start out with it like this at first and then switch over and start trimming it down to change the length, the profile of that bait. And as you change the profile of that bait, um, it's also going to change the action on this tail. Every time you, you shorten this up some, it's going to change the action on this, this uh, paddle tail, on this boot tail trailer. So something to think about too, just experiment with it. 
uh, on different sizes and the way you trim it down, even trimming the head off in an angle uh, versus just coming across flush there, um, it can make a difference too. So kind of think outside the box, uh, get out of your comfort zone when you're, when you're throwing these different trailers, and I, I think you'll have a lot of success. Okay, so now we'll get into more of the minnow style shape, if you will, profile baits. And this is a Gary Yamamoto, um, I'm going to hold it up here. It's a Gary Yamamoto Zacco is what that is. And it is a segmented body on it. It has a ton of action on the retrieve. And this is a fantastic trailer too. Um, one of my favorites as well. We did really well on an October tournament on this, but this is another one that um, that really excels when you're you're moving the bait a little bit slower, maybe slow rolling it, um, as opposed to really kind of burning that bait, say over weed beds and stuff. When you're throwing in and around timber or they're feeding on shad, that's when I really like to have this profile of this minnow shaped body rather than one uh, that's more slender, like for example, the Reaction Innovation or that just has a real small profile like the zoom chunk that I was showing you. But when I rig this bait, I'll do it usually two different ways. Uh, I always start out by usually trimming a little bit, as you can see there, off the top, off the head. And um, that way it's nice and flush against the back of the head of the chatter bait. And then what I like to do a lot of times too, I'll start off like that if I'm not getting bit like I want to, because when it's a, it's a bulkier, wider profile like that, it kills a little bit of the tail action, which sometimes is what you want, a little more of a subtle action to that bait. And then if not, I'll take it. And you can see compared to this one, what I've done, I've gone and trimmed the belly down some. So I'll take my scissors and just, or knife, usually scissors, and just trim a little bit of this belly off to give it a slimmer profile in the water. So, and I'm also, if you notice, I've trimmed this one off a little shorter. So I'll shorten it up. I'll cut the belly down some and it gives it that smaller, shorter profile. And that's all dependent upon, like I've talked about in other videos, um, if I happen to see near the bank or, or wherever I'm fishing, I see shad that are a smaller profile, I'm going to trim that down to give that bait a smaller overall profile. You know, this time of year, late winter, we're going to get into early spring and the pre-spawn, the shad are going to be the biggest they've been basically all year. So a bigger profile is a way to start. If you don't get bit with that, that's when I'm going to trim it down and go to that smaller profile on that trailer. And last but not least, this is just a fantastic chatterbait trailer designed by Z-Man uh, as a chatterbait trailer primarily, but it is the Z-Man Razor Shad. And you know, it's made out of that Elastec, so it just, man, it stretches like crazy, won't break, um, and all that good stuff. But it is once again, uh, kind of like the Gary Yamamoto Zacco. It's a segmented body, but you can see, I mean, I'm trying to hold my hand still and it's still wiggling all over the place. Um, it, with the slightest movement or water pressure, there's a lot of action to that. Uh, one thing I like to do, you can see the end of this, it's blunted off. Um, what I've done is gone in and, and just barely trimmed the nose off of it. Once again, because I like to lay that or have that lay flat against the back of that chatterbait. This is another one I like to throw. Uh, especially this is my favorite color. It's called the deal. Um, and I like to throw that when I think they're feeding on, um, bluegill primarily, but even shad. But if I've got that bluegill base, I'm going with a darker colored skirt on my chatterbait. Um, I love this, this color of Z-Man razor shad. And, um, if I'm going for more of the shad look, then I can even go with the lighter sc uh, colored skirt, like we were talking before and have that contrast Or I can even throw this color of Z-Man razor shad or a lighter color like a white um, or chartreuse, something of that nature. Hey guys, I hope you got something out of the video today. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that like button down below and also that bell notification button. That way you can get notified each time I upload a new video to YouTube. Uh, you know, this video here is kind of a prelude to Tackle Talk, which we're going to do every first and third Wednesday of the month. So if there's any Thing you'd like to see on there as far as types of lures covered, tips, techniques, rods, reels, uh, strategy, anything like that, just let me know and I'll try to get those done for you. Once again, I really appreciate you checking out the video today. And remember, until that next video, get out there and fish. Mm -hmm.